I got some things to say today. Are we okay to be in a congregation where we can say yes to things? Are we in a congregation where it's okay to say no to things? I celebrate that freedom in this congregation. I celebrate that freedom in this nation. And so just suspend any yes or no until I'm all done, and then let me know the yes or no that you have on the other side of it. But I wanted to start with a little story. A, a Russian and an American were arguing about freedom in their countries. They were arguing back and forth, back and forth. And the American says, look, in my country, I can walk right up to the Oval Office. I can pound the president's desk and say, Mr. President, I don't like the way you're running the United States of America. And the Russian responds, well... I can do the same thing. Really? Really? Certainly. The Russian says, I can always walk into the Kremlin and go to the general secretary's office. I can pound his desk and I can say, Mr. General Secretary, I don't like the way the president is running the United States. <laughs> Freedom is not free. Say that with me. Freedom is this is a phrase that we often hear around Memorial Day, sometimes on Veterans Day, and certainly on Independence Day, as we celebrate the men and women who paid a sacrifice for us to be here to be able to say yes and to be able to say no. Yes, it's a blessed, blessed and sacred privilege, and we must honor it. We're going to talk about honoring that and maybe having a little bit more respect for that inside the church and inside the nation. Freedoms that obviously the Russians do not enjoy, that we still pray for Ukraine and Russia. And this is coming off because it's hot in here. Uh. We are free. I, I'll leave the shirt on, believe me. You don't want to see that. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Freedoms that the Russians do not enjoy, but there is a sacrifice. Freedom is not free that we must pay. How many know what the word sacrifice means? It means to make sacred. It means to make sacred, to offer my heart, my soul, my mind, my body, my life to something sacred, something holy, something valuable. Yes, we need to make that sacrifice as well and not put all the burden on men and women who maybe lost their lives or certainly went to battle and came home and were not respected when they came home. These are not just words of honor that we share compulsory on Veterans Day, Memorials Day, and Independence Day. They are words that we need to live every single moment, every day, as, as we regularly contribute to the freedom shared by all of us, all of us, not just some of us, not just one of us, but all of us. As Americans, we have rights. Have you noticed that? As Americans, we have rights. As members of this community, we have rights. And if we stop there, it is a quick trip to chaos. Because we also have responsibilities. In fact, I invite you to say that with me. Put your hand upon your heart and say, I have responsibilities. I we have responsibilities to the church, to our families, to our work, to our community, and to our nation. It's true of this spiritual organization. You have rights as a congregant, and I hope that you exercise those rights as a congregant in a place of free speech, of free religion, of the ability to assemble and to have free press within this community, and I hope that you are exercising those same rights as a citizen of the United States. You see, you have rights and responsibilities. One without the other does not make for a healthy or prosperous nation, and it does not make for a healthy or prosperous church. I'm going to talk about that today. It makes for a very codependent one. Now, I'm just looking at the nation, and I always like to look at the macrocosm to see what might be going on at the microcosm of us. I think we've got some work to do with these ideas, and that's both sides of an aisle. I'm going to speak. I might offend everybody on every side of the aisle today. That's okay. Let yourself be offended. Say yes to what you want to say yes to and say no to what you want to say no to. But my job is to make you think. That's my job. I was not here to find complete agreement. I was to, to create unity within the field of diversity, within the yeses and the noes in the room to find love. Yes to love. Yes to the God that's doing business as all creation. Yes to the one spirit and the one energy that's expressed as all of us, regardless of who you vote for. 
yes to the founding ideals of a nation that should be united and right now looks like anything but a united states. Sometimes I get to look at the microcosm and sometimes we in unity, we're so devoted to our unity, to our passion about being unified in our duality. I'm passionate of being right. So what we stand upon is a, a sand. It's a house that crumbles. I'm unified with you in you being wrong and me being wrong. And somehow unity fades. And it's all just a big scam and it's not real. I'm saying we got to work a little bit harder as a nation. And we got to work a little bit harder as a church and as a minister. That's my job to make you think. Nelson Mandela, one of my heroes, once said this. I'm going to invite you to read this with me together. For to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. Breathe that in. On this Independence Day weekend, I invite us all to be a lot more conscious of how we are using our personal freedom to grow the communal and collective freedom. How am I using my rights and my freedoms and my responsibilities to create a better nation, a better church for all? I like to go back to the three musketeers. In fact, I invite you to say it. One for all and all for one. Say that with me. One. And that's got to stand true. It's got to be absolute. Not one for all and all for one except them. Many paths, one God, just not that. All, everywhere I look, I see the face of God. But have you met my Uncle Jim? You know, we cannot make exceptions to where the principles that we are teaching apply. We cannot wiggle or we are a house built upon sand and unity will crumble. Yes? There appears to be a lot of societal confusion these days as to the meaning of personal freedom. Call it out. Just call it out. What does personal freedom mean to you? Don't be shy. What, okay. What else? Speech. Vote. Voting. I told you last week to go vote. If you want your voice to be heard, go use the system in place and go let your voice and your vote be heard. The confusion seems to be that, that we are functioning in personal freedom without any limitation, at any point to be able to do whatever the heck I want to do, and I get to do it whenever I want to do it, to whomever I want to do it, and it's all about my personal freedom without any interference from anybody outside. There are people that believe that. And at some subconscious level, there's a lot of us believing that. Ah, God bless America until I don't get my way. God bless America until... I have to do something that I don't want to do. God bless America and our system until the system doesn't work in my favor. We cannot make wiggle room on the system any more than we can make wiggle room on this church as a unity church and what we stand for. This is a fantasy of many people in unity churches. Many New Thought churches have adopted the idea that anything goes Anything goes. It's the church of what's happening now. We can be anything you want. I can do whatever you want, and they don't care at the Unity Church. And we get critiqued for that. On the opposite side of all the rules and regulations of the Baptist Church, then there's Unity way over there. You can just do whatever you want. They don't care. They don't have any rules or regulations. They don't have any dogma. They don't have any spiritual principles. Well, yes, we do. It's structure. How many have ever heard me talk about being a Virgo? I like to grab the Virgo characteristics that I really like, and I carry them, and the ones, there's a lot of Virgo characters, you can read stuff about us, oh my gosh, it's not, Nancy knows, it's not so pretty, I'm going to leave those to the side. Well, I can't, I have to look at my tendencies, but one of the things that is absolutely a Virgo, a Virgo dream is the ability to understand that structure is important. Structure is important. Without it, there's a quick trip to societal chaos, to collapse. Structure is what allows us to be here right now in this room thinking the way you think, different than the person over there. Structure is what allows us to still be here as a functioning church when things fall apart in the world and we can come together and in our diversity, remember we belong to each other. I'm certainly happy about the structure that allows my family to be safe driving down the highway. 
Well, I'm certainly very blessed that I can get on the street and there's a structure in place to keep me and my family safe. I value that. That's just one small example. I'm also, as a Virgo, I get a little bit ticked off at the loopholes within the structure. Yes, I can be a little bit anal about that, but I'm going to call them out. There are loopholes in our structure. I'm not happy about that, that allow manipulation at the government level. And it happens, folks, and that is not, that's a bipartisan reality. The misuse of loopholes as a means to get Certain freedoms taken care of for certain groups of people and not the others. None of us are free until all of us are free. And I want you to hear that. None of us are free until all of us are free. Say that with me. None of us are free until all of us are free. Far beyond the external rules which dominate the landscape of this church and this nation that we can debate for a hundred years. And we at Unity Folk, we love to debate our rules or regulations. Yeah, he said the word regulations. We can debate for a hundred years. Personal freedom requires self-discipline. Personal freedom requires self-discipline. Say that with me. Personal freedom requires self-discipline. Rights and responsibilities are sisters. Say that with me. Rights and responsibilities are sisters. They are partners. They are brothers. They are co-creative energies, a yin and a yang that must come together so that there isn't chaos, but that within the structure there is a greater freedom that happens because of those regulations, because of those boundaries, and because of those rules. Responsibility without freedom is imprisonment. And I look back at the Bible, our, our go-to gospel, our go-to textbook, that's what the Roman Empire was. Responsibility without any freedom. It's a system that does not work. So along comes onto the scene, into the midst of the Roman Empire, a man named Jesus, who brought a new awareness, who brought a new idea. What did Jesus bring? Well, he brought freedom. But not freedom without responsibility, because that's chaos. Freedom without responsibility is license to just do whatever the hell you want. And that's not the nation we live in, or the church that we worship in. He brought into the Roman Empire both spiritual freedom. He broke down some borders to put up other borders. And he set, put in spiritual order. Spiritual order, divine principle, divine laws, divine ways of interacting with each other, of being with each other as brothers and sisters. He brought both a moral code for how we treat each other. And he broke down some walls of old paradigms. But far beyond these external rules, we need to just dig deeper and make it personal. I'm asking you to make the words that I'm saying today personal. I'm asking you to take that flag and to make it personal today. I'm asking you to take every class you ever took in the unity movement and to make it personal because until it is personal, you're spinning your wheels. And we're falling one direction or another subject to the whims of the waves of those that would drag you left or right to a place of extreme. I'm saying we need to be conscious, yes? Gandhi, Gandhi once was asked a question. He said, what do you think about Western civilization? And Gandhi said, well, gosh, I think it would be a really good idea. <laughs> and if you look at the world today, we have kind of devolved a little bit away from a civilized society. There's war going on. There's war going on in the Holy Grounds Cafe. Let's just get real. Oh, they're not bombs going off, but boy, there's language going off. We're far from a United States in the holy ground some Sundays. We're far from a united movement in the sanctuary sometimes. Part of my job, my job as a minister is to look at the field and call it out. That's what I do here. Not because I'm making anybody wrong or bad, but because I say this is where there's healing needed. This is where we need to bring ourselves into congruity, into alignment with the original teaching concepts of the United States and of the unity movement. Let me give you a few examples of what I'm talking about today. Last week I introduced you to my, my new friend. He's a member of this church, been here for many years, but he's become a new friend. And I decided as I'm getting ready to turn 60 that I needed to maybe get a little healthier body so I didn't end up looking like my father. Paul Feldman is a member of our... Stand up, Paul, so we can see who you are. The guy's built like a truck. 
He's got muscles on top of his muscles. He's a great human being besides being totally buffed. Both Paul and I, since we came onto this field, this earthly existence, had the freedom to build a healthy body. You know, and we actually have the same body type. I don't know if I believe it, but there's, this is in there somewhere. <laughs> and better yet, that's in here somewhere. I hope I find it before I'm 65. Or at least close to it. They call it ectomorph. I think that's the appropriate term, ectomorph. Skinny little guy who can't build muscle very well. Well, guess what? He proved them wrong. And I want to prove a lot of things wrong in this nation and in this church that isn't possible. I believe it's all possible. We teach possibility. And so we're working out. But both Paul and I, since we came into the earthly existence, had that potential. What is the difference in that freedom? Discipline. He put the discipline in. He put the time in. He put the structure on. He went and he lifted the weights. He went and did it, and I didn't. Both of us had the same freedom. The same possibility was there. It's not enough to just be free. Those who take responsibility with dedicated effort get there. Now, in all fairness, I've been teasing Paul because I, he's going to get me healthy. I said, I'm going to teach you to sing. I never saw, he, 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 this big man went about this big all of a sudden when I said I was going to make him sing. I took my freedom and I used it to sing. I used it to do music. I sat at the piano and got hunched shoulders. Well, he, he built his up. But the reality is we had freedoms. And the, where you put the discipline, where you put the effort, where you put the time, where you put the consciousness is what's going to build the body, the music, the, the nation, and the church that we all want. Yes? On that note, you cannot get the benefit of Unity North coming to this place once every three months. People come in, it, it, it kind of makes me laugh a little. They come in after having been gone for six months and they go, I don't know anybody. It doesn't feel the same. It will never feel the same because you haven't made a commitment to community. Family takes commitment. It takes follow through. It takes effort. It takes passion, power, time, energy, enthusiasm, and it takes putting your body in the arena. I can stay at home and will lifting those weights and nothing's going to change. Or I can come put myself in the room and lift the spiritual weights and watch my life unfold and the connection I make with sisters and brothers facing the same direction. That's what the United States is about. Sisters and brothers somehow in our diversity finding a place to be unified. I'm going to another example I want to give you. I'm going to California tomorrow. I'm leaving on a plane. God willing, please pray that Delta does not cancel that flight. <laughs> I'm going to go take care of my parents. Uh, as you know, I've been sharing that my mom, by the way, she's done with chemo. She's done. She's a little nervous that she's going to have surgery, but she's thrilled that her, her prodigal son is coming home, and she's got a long list of jobs. I'll be painting, cleaning windows, and God knows what else. Um, so my workout that I won't get for the next four weeks will be taken care of painting. Wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. <laughs> but I'm going to California to perform the wedding ceremony of my wonderful grandson Luke and the most beautiful woman that he could ever find. He needs to hold on to her. They're getting married, and I get to perform the wedding for them. And what's, go ahead and clap for him. This is for you, Luke. In that ceremony, they're going to exchange vows to each other. Vows that contain a degree of freedom for both of them. Now, that doesn't make any sense. Isn't marriage a ball and a chain? Well, it is for those who contextualize it that way. No, there's, their, their wins, their celebrations, their joys are about to be increased and amplified to tremendous ways based on the vows that they make to each other, the promises that they're making to each other, and their, their dark nights of the soul, their losses, their pains, their difficulties are about to be lessened as a result of the vows, the co-creative sharing energy between the two people. It's exciting. Both in their partnership are going to experience a freer life together. Freer than they had individually. And that's a paradox. It does not make any sense to the human ego. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm giving up something to get married to somebody and I'm going to be freer on the other side. And the answer is an emphatic yes. The word vow also contains within it 
the energy of this word, commitment. Say that with me. Commitment. A commitment to not just speak the words on a beautiful day when everybody's happy and joyous, but to live those words day to day even when it's tough. The last time I was with Paul, you know, I, I think it was last, last Sunday, I said, you know, I, the, the guy who built his upper body and had the skinny little legs, Paul left church that day and said, I can't wait to get a hold of your legs tomorrow. <laughs> he, I was rubber for the next three days. But the reality is there is a commitment. If I'm going to get to the other side, that means wobbly legs and all, knocking knees and all, dark nights of the soul, I'm going to get there. And I'm going to be so bold to say that our nation is in a dark night of the soul right now. It's been there for a little bit because we are so committed to our duality. We are so unified in us being right, you being wrong, or you being right, and me being wrong. We need to have a commitment to remember that we belong to each other, to not just speak the words that we celebrate on Independence Day, Veterans Day, and Memorial Day, but to live those words day to day even when it's tough, even when it's dark. A commitment to be kind. A commitment to be trustworthy. A commitment to be honest. A commitment to being responsible for the other's well-being as, and happiness as much as we are for our own. These are words that will be spoken in that ceremony. The vow and the commitment that I will be responsible for your happiness and well-being as much as I am for my own life. The same promise that our government positions also have made to each and every one of us as citizens and seem to have forgotten. You can't do whatever you feel like doing in marriage and you cannot do whatever you feel like doing in the government. There's a checks and a balance system. And there's a checks and a balance system here in this, in this church. It's called accountability. It's called accountability. Say that with me. For Luke and Kendra, the decisions that they used to make by themselves are now decisions that include someone else. And I see at the government level down to the Holy Grands Cafe, you can't just make decisions and not be considerate and respectful about what's happening to the people down the line. It's dominoes. You make a decision because it feels good. And there's a lot of people in New Thought going around saying it's all about just feeling good all the time. Let's just feel good. It feels good to me without any thought about what's going to happen down the line. I think that's the most selfish mindset that has dominated this culture of the United States today. It's on both sides of the aisle. Nobody is, is immune to this idea, and it's in Holy Ground's Cafe. So I'm challenging us, I'm challenging myself to be more unified and to think about my actions, to think about consequences, not punishments. There are consequences for action. This is the law of karma. This is the law of cause and effect, and we need to get back in touch with it because we're creating an effect that five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, we may not like. Be mindful, Americans. Be mindful, unity students. It's a co-creative co energy that I'm calling forth in the nation and in the church. co creative, as cells within the body of God coming together to remember the truth, to remember the principles, to remember the foundation, to remember the ideals, because we have forgotten it on all fronts. I believe our government officials and our justice system have currently forgotten the same responsibility that exists in this church, exists in their offices. In the midst of marriage, in the midst of democracy, we have a right to expect things from our partner. But if you stop there, chaos is going to ensue. We also have a responsibility to offer those things in return. If Luke makes a promise that he doesn't make good on, that marriage will end. If we make a pledge to each other as American citizens to honor your freedom, your rights, and then don't follow through with that, we're not going to be standing. And guess what? We will be speaking Russian or Chinese. And then we're going to value those freedoms more than we ever did before. We, as citizens of Unity North Atlanta Church, need to honor the freedom of religion that exists in this space. Many paths, one God, just not yours, because that one hurt me. Doesn't work that way, folks. 
I need to be in a co-creative environment, a circle where give and receive, give and receive is, is the dominant energy, is the dominant consciousness. Say with me, we belong to each other. Don't take my word for it. Let's go to Sanskrit. Let's go back to ancient teachings. This is not new thought. I'm not going to for, forgive my pronunciation of the Sanskrit, but it's loka, samasta, sakino, bhavantu. This is what it means. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may the thoughts, the words, and the actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to the freedom for all. It's easy. The first part's easy. May all beings be happy. May all beings be joyous. Oh, wait a minute. I got to do something about it. May the thoughts, the words, and the actions of my life contribute in some way to the happiness and the freedom of all. That's the foundation of our church. It's the foundation of our nation. If it doesn't, if we're not co-creative, it's a house built on sand and it's going to fail. Plain and simple. If it is, freedom's going to soar. And it makes no sense to the human ego. The more you're in it for, for that person, that person, that person, and that person, the greater your freedom is going to be. It's a great paradox. I'm saying be in it for the whole as much as you are in it for yourself. And then go to the polls and vote for the people that understand that concept. Don't fight the ones that don't understand the concept. That's a waste of your time. Go let the energy be placed in the people that get it. We belong to each other. I'm going to invite the band to come back up. As a leader in this church, my style, I've been, my style has been really criticized. I think the staff likes it. I tend to be a little bit hands-off as a leader. We brainstorm, we plan, we strategize, and then as the leader or the manager, I go hands-off. You tell me you're going to do it, I believe you're going to do it. Get the job done. Get her done is kind of my mindset. Get her done. You said you're going to do it, do it. That's good enough for me. There are those that criticize that. And you can play a little music, John, like you did first service. That was kind of nice. Do what you say you're going to do. Complete what you say you're going to complete. It's just plain integrity. We come up here and we talked about the oneness of all people, of all religions, of all humanity, of all the earth. We're out of integrity if we are speaking words that are out of integrity with that truth. You're bashing somebody, you're out of integrity with unity. You're out of integrity with the United Nations. And I don't care if that's left, right, up, or down. If you're bashing somebody, you're out of integrity. So the other component to the staff here is accountability. And this is where I tend to fall down. I don't like confrontation. But I'm learning as a leader to just go, you said you were going to do it, you didn't do it, how can we get her done? I'm going to hold you accountable. And one thing I'm realizing, and the board knows, that my contract is coming up. We're in negotiations for my contract. And I realize if I'm going to serve for however long the board wants me to serve here, I better get in integrity with my ability to hold this church accountable, to hold myself accountable, to hold my friends, my fellow travelers accountable to what I say is important here. I need to hold my language accountable. I need to hold my actions accountable. Yes, it's a free, beautiful environment, but without accountability, this place will not flourish. Yes, we are a free nation, but without accountability, this nation will not flourish. We're going the wrong directions, folks. And I'm just asking you to wake up, open up the field a little bit, and pay attention. We've gotten too far. I want my freedoms. I want my freedoms. I want my freedoms to do whatever I want, but I don't want any responsibility. But then you're in the wrong nation. Campaign promises are mere bait to get votes these days. Words are offered as pretty decorations for the ears, but we've lost sight of the duty we have as leaders of a free nation to make good on those words. The White House, Congress, the Senate, on down to the leadership of Unity North Atlanta Church and what's going on in Holy Grounds Cafe. I hope I made you a little uncomfortable with that. But the reality is if I'm going to call myself out, I'm going to hold the environment to call it out what's happening in Holy Grounds Cafe. It's not in alignment with what unity is about. Those who think the freest church 
and the freest country is the one that asks the least of its citizens, you're, you're mistaken. You have it all wrong. We have obligations to each other as Unity students, as members of this community, as Americans, in the way we act, the sacrifices we agree to to make the whole sacred and the rules and the responsibilities. George Bernard Shaw said this. I invite you to read this with me. Freedom means responsibility. That is why most men fear freedom. My grandpa Buck was the best minister I ever met. He was not a minister. I don't know what he believed religiously. But one thing I know is for miles and miles and miles around where I grew up in farm country, my grandfather's handshake was his bond. He never had to have a contract, and he did a lot of business, ever. If you got a handshake from Carl Buck, you knew it was good. You can take it to the bank. If he said he was going to do it, he did it, and you can take that to the bank. I'm asking us as Unity students, espousing all the spiritual concepts of oneness that we get to celebrate every week to be Carl Buck. And when you find yourself out of integrity, hold yourself accountable. When you find yourself bashing somebody else because they completely disagree and you don't have any idea how they can think like that, you're either adding to the divisiveness or you're adding to the unity. What are the freedoms we get to enjoy? In this nation, what are the freedoms? Right there. Freedom of speech. I have a responsibility to speak kindly and respectfully and honestly. Plain and simple. Without it, freedom of speech is a weapon. Freedom of religion. I love that we can come here. And I don't love that there's a mindset that sometimes comes in the door. My God can beat up your God. My God could beat up your God and he's going to do it. I like to be in a church where it says, my God is one with your God, loves your God. My God, she loves your God. My God is only love, period, and I won't waver. Freedom of the press. We have a responsibility with freedom of the press to mindfully walk the line between truth and slander. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, but there's a lot of two words out there. It's out everywhere. Fake news, fake news, fake news. I don't know where the truth lies on any news program these days. But what I do know is that truth lives here. Let me touch in. Like the song said, say yes to the guidance of spirit. Say yes to that which is moving and stirring within me. To that which says be kind, be generous, be compassionate. That's the God that's speaking, and that's where I want to say yes. And then there's the freedom of assembly. The freedom of assembly. I love that we can come here and talk about whatever we want to talk about. Freedom of assembly to gather together and share ideas, but also shared responsibility to not become a hateful, destructive mob. That's happening everywhere. And if we think it's bombs and weapons, sometimes... The freedom of assembly is abused in Holy Ground's cafe. I can't tell you the number of people on both sides of the aisle that said I walked through Holy Ground's and I didn't feel welcome here because of the words that were being spoken on Holy Ground. I can ignore it. I can pretend it's not there, which is what New Thought communities do all over the country, or I can go, we need to get back into the gym. We need to lift some weights. We need to work on the legs a little bit and have rubber legs for a moment and be uncomfortable with what we're calling out as a United States and as a unity church. And then there's the one that is exercised in this church all the time. Freedom to complain to the government without the fear of punishment. Do you know how blessed it is that we can do that? That they cannot do it at the Kremlin. You lose your life. And let's just take a moment to celebrate that. With all of the flaws of this nation, we can gather together and we can complain about who's in the office. Who did what? Who did what in this office and that office? You can do that here in this Unity North Church as well. And you have a minister that will put their ears on. You have a board that will put their ears on and not be punished but say, let me have your opinion. I welcome your opinion. 
That's something we need to cherish. It's a blessed gift both in the nation and in the church, and there's a freedom of counter-opinion that is welcome here. And it comes with a responsibility for those opinions to be delivered directly, not triangulation. Oh, let me go express my complaint down in holy grounds or in the parking lot about what I don't like about my church. That's a cowardly way out. Unity is not a congregation of cowards. Unity North is a congregation of love and oneness and talking it through. I've got a complaint. Let's figure this out together because we belong to each other. We have a responsibility to deliver it without violence, without personal attack, and with respect. Just like a marriage, whether it be your marriage, I see beautifully married couples in the room that I, their heads went like this when I was talking about Luke and Kendra. Just like a marriage, just like the staff of Unity North, just like the United States, the vows that we make to each other to be responsible are assuring that my grandchildren and great-grandchildren will experience the freedoms that we enjoy right here, right now. That's a workout that Paul and I and all of us can get behind and participate in. I ask